Welcome back to Inside Southern California. I'm Bruce W. Cook. If you're just joining us, my guest today is Dr. Paul Chazen. And joining him on this segment is Kelly Jones, one of his patients who really looks sensational. So it's going to be interesting to find out what the before was because the after is pretty incredible. Kelly, welcome to Inside Southern California. Thank you. Honored to be here. Tell us a little bit about your story. Why did you go to see Paul Chazen? What led you to him? I mean, maybe I'm being okay. obvious, but you know, you look very young and very beautiful. Why would you need plastic surgery? Um, well, um, I, uh, I uh, am a swimsuit model upon occasion. And one of the things that was the first, um, I guess, flag was um, after shoots, photographers would say, well, we're either going to have to airbrush or we're going to have to have uh, shoots without you showing your face. Um, and so I, that felt pretty horrible. I wouldn't say it felt horrible. I mean, you understand that, you know, as you grow older, things happen. Um, it, didn't, it didn't bother my confidence or anything, but I realized it was a necessity. May I ask you how old you are? Uh, I will not tell you because I don't believe that's important. Okay. Um, what I believe is important is that, um, is looking your best no matter what your age. And I think I would just encourage, encourage more of that viewpoint. So this, mo this motivation or impetus to improve your looks came from a career standpoint. It wasn't a personal thing. It wasn't a boyfriend or a husband or, or friends that said, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was no. you wanted to be your best for your career. It, not only for my career, but for myself. For me, it's, it's about um, the ownership of, of who I am and all of who I am holistically. Um, I, I recognized that there were some changes that needed to be made so that in the future, as far as the big picture is concerned, that I could look my best then too. And so although career um, was an aspect of it, it was not the entire aspect. Um, I um, have used the word stewardship or ownership, uh, just taking care of myself, looking my best, um, and, uh, and preparing for the future. Paul, when uh, Kelly came to you, what was your first impression? What did you tell her? Well, you know, one of the, the interview, when I interview someone, it's a process. It's not like somebody comes in and you say, okay, you need this. You, you talk to them, who they are, where they come from, what their goals are. Then I go through an examination process and I, I look for, you know, after doing this for a number of years, you, you kind of know what things you can do to one, beautify. You look at their bone structure, what things as at, that bother me that I could see that I would like to change on them. And then you create this process with the patient of what what you think you can do, what things that bother them, and you come up with a plan, and it's an individualized plan. Before we look at the before and after <laughs> pictures, which I know you don't want to show, oh, I know, but that's right. tell us basically, run down the eyes, the nose, the cheeks, what did you first see and what did you suggest, and were there things that Kelly said to you, as we talked about in our first segment, that you said, no, we're not going to do that? Well, the, the thing is, is um, a lot of, some of the things that patients see that they don't, they don't really know, they can't get a handle on I don't, I don't like that about my mouth, but they don't know really what it is about their mouth they don't like or uh, what they'd like to change about it. They just know they don't like it. Or, you know, she had somewhat of a prominent chin. She had uh, fairly prominent eyes. And uh, she had a, a bump on her nose. And so um, those are the things that initially I saw that I thought, well, we can, you know, make her nose look better. We can do something, uh, a lower eye lift, uh, uh, the technical term is a lateral tarsal strip. When you say up. prominent eyes, did they droop down? Were they uh, kind uh, of unbalanced? Kind of, uh, bigger eyes. Um, I won't, I don't You'll see the picture. You'll see the picture. <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing them uh, yeah. Oh, you are seeing them now. You, know, you see her eyes uh, almost look like she's uh, surprised or staring at you. And then on the, on the side picture, you see her chin seems somewhat prominent. And so between the nose and the chin, it, those two things were fairly prominent. Um, so what I want to do is balance that. And so what we did, we did her upper eyelids, we did her nose, we tightened the lower eyelids, um, we did a, a petite mini facelift uh, just to uh, tighten up her neck, and then um, we did a, what I consider an appropriate lip augmentation. Well, I think you get an A+. Plus. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy? How long ago was all this done? Uh, June through August, if I believe. So recently. Yeah. 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 So recently. Yeah, and, and the, uh, you can't tell, I, I don't want to say you can't tell, because obviously in any surgery there's some swelling afterwards, but um, at both, in both situations, we did it in two different phases, in both situations within a week, I was back to work. Yeah, And so. um, uh, we did, I want to say I'm a month out right now from 
I think you're two months out from the second surgery. We did yeah. we did your nose at the second right. phase, and I mean, she did great. She's a great patient, and you know <laughs> people who people who take care of themselves, eat well, and work out, and exercise. There's a physiologic reason they they heal better. I mean, exercise dilates the peripheral capillary beds, more nutrition to the cells and the skin, and so my I clearly see people who work out and exercise recover much better. Well, I think you've recovered just quite fine. Thank you, sir. Uh, we need to take our next break, Paul and Kelly. Uh, but one quick question before we do. Is any of this covered by insurance, or is this all elective? Did you have to pay for all of I, this? I paid for everything. There was nothing that was covered by insurance, okay, and I would do it again. Okay. Well, the it audience, is well worth it. The audience wants to hear that. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Jones, Dr. Paul Chazen, we're talking about making ourselves look the best we can be, and this is Inside Southern California. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, inside Southern California. I'm Bruce W. Cook, your host, and we're having a very interesting conversation today with Dr. Paul Chasen, his patient Kelly Jones. When we went to break, Kelly, I said, was it worth it? You had to pay for this yourself. What was the reaction afterwards, and what did people say to you? Um, the reaction is, oh, definitely, definitely it's worth it. I would encourage anybody. It's a life-changing situation. Uh, it's a definitely a, an improvement for the better. Um, people's reactions are different, um, surprisingly Was there any enough. jealousy? Was there any like, oh my goodness, what has she done? Oh, definitely. There was a lot of jealousy. Um, I don't want to say a lot, but you get reactions. Different people react in different ways. Um, some are um, almost hostile. Others are very supportive. Um, some are very surprised. Um, and you just have to take that. You have to take that in stride. Doctor, you shared a story about a patient uh, very upset about something and then another member of the family uh, joined in. Share that with us. Well we had a lady, she was Middle Eastern, I don't know if that makes any difference but there's a lot of different cultural things and we see sisters and between moms and daughters there's always some some issues and so she had cheek implants uh, they turned out great and early in the post-operative period she came in the office crying and uh, I said what's the matter? She said and she looked fantastic and she says, my sister says I'm ugly, that I never should have done it. I said, well, that's a shame because I think you look great, but let's, let's have you come back in a couple of weeks and let some of the swelling go down, but you look great. Uh, it wasn't even a week later her sister came in and booked surgery for the same thing. Thank you. That makes the point. What are the <laughs> biggest, or there's like top five surgeries that you do that people come to you for? Uh, can you list them for me? Yeah, uh, I would say probably the most common are breast augmentation, breast surgeries, liposuction, um, facial rejuvenation, which would include, you know, facelifts and brow lifts and that kind of stuff. Um, also, noses, rhinoplasty. And probably the other one that's very common is uh, tummy tucks because, you know, moms have kids and that really distorts their abdomen and no matter how much they work out, they still have loose skin or stretch marks and the tummy tuck just it works beautifully for that. You have another, we have another before and after shot uh, of another okay. patient. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll put it, that up on the screen. Describe what's going on here. Well, this is a very typical 57-year-old um, who uh, was a former uh, Playboy playmate, um, mm -hmm. and now she's 57, and that, what we talked about before, she looked in the mirror or saw a picture, and just uh, she said she looks like her mom. And uh, we did um, a upper eyelid blepharoplasty and a facelift on her, and um, I think very little else. And that, that just shows you the power of, of what you can do. Well, it's clearly that uh, you took quite a few years off of that former Playboy model. Uh, we're almost out of time, so I want to ask you, first, Kelly, what's the best part of this, and what do you say to other people? Um, the best part of it is that it changes your life for the better. Um, I would just encourage um, anybody that's considering this, don't be apprehensive, um, and uh, step out. Step out and, and, uh, uh, and check it out. Do exactly. your research. The only, the only person that you're going to guarantee, the only investment you can make in your life that you can guarantee the return on is an investment in yourself. Paul, final words. Investigate your plastic surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Find someone There's who's a... passionate about what they do, and, and you can see their results, and, and uh, you get the feeling from them that they're more about the person and, and helping rather than selling something. 
and there is a lot of choices out there. So you say, do your homework, go interview several people, Absolutely. make sure you're comfortable, and check everything out. It's, uh, it's not so easy. You've just moved your practice. You were in La Jolla. You're now building a facility in Del Mar. In a few seconds, tell us what this is all about. I, I think I, I want my goal is to build a unique patient experience where there's no more parking issues. It's convenient. Um, I full service. I basically want to have something that was more uh, unique than anything else in town. And you'll be opening in January in That's Del Mar. Mm -hmm. That's it. We're out of time, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bruce W. Cook, and uh, I'll be seeing Paul very shortly. Anyway, thank you for joining us inside Southern California.